London Heathrow. Host to 78 million passengers, nearly half a million flights, and one very unusual animal reception center. Animals passing through Heathrow come here to be checked in. Oh, he's really cute. Also known as the Ark, it's equipped to welcome almost any species through its doors. Its feet are massive. Not that big. From reptiles and livestock to pets and predators. It's up to the Ark to make sure everyone is clear to enter the country. Oh, textbook, Dan, textbook. More than 200,000 animals passed through last year alone. And its dedicated team of over 40 staff are on hand every hour of every day. Where's our water pot? And are always prepared to expect the unexpected. Ooh. <laughs> Today on Animal Airport, the team raced to get two puppies to their plane on time. I said they've got 15 minutes to get the box right. Okay. It's all a bit crazy. Some unusual kittens are laying on the charm. They are so friendly, they're so cuddly. I can't wait to see them. And three pet parrots fly in from South Africa. Hello. There's a ring neck. One cockatiel. And two cockatiels. Heathrow's Animal Reception Center is passport control for any creature that comes through the airport. Many travelers are on short stopovers, so staff have their work cut out to ensure they make their connections. Intern Dan is trying to process two collie puppies that need to catch a flight to Canada in three hours. The two dogs that are fighting, um, I've been told that they are not liking each other in, a, in the box. Animals of the same species are allowed to share a box if they're used to living together or come from the same litter. But these siblings are not getting along. Yeah. Well, you can clearly see that this is very uncomfortable. The... Yeah. yeah. Vet Andrew is on hand to help Dan figure out what to do with the bickering pair. Just look, look at the posture, how they are. She, she's sitting literally so bad on the box you know, with the water because she yeah, doesn't yeah, want to okay. do anything. I'll take her out. There's a risk that they'll hurt each other. Come on in. So for their own safety, they have to be split up. All oh, right, you've been naughty, you stay in there. I don't think there's any, any um, serious injury. It's a long way to Canada, so um, we better put them in separate boxes. But for now, he's going in a kennel because we don't have another box for him yet. Right, come on then. The squabbling siblings won't be able to leave the Ark until the shipping agent delivers two new individual boxes so they can travel separately. The agent will have to hurry now and bring us a new box, otherwise they're going to miss their flight. Where is the one in the kennel now? So it's empty. Meanwhile, Supervisor Kaylee. Is dealing with the next challenge. Because they're already booked as one box on the flight, we have to get the airline to okay a new box and change area bill, rebook it. Might not have enough space for two boxes on the aircraft because they allocate space and usually they don't have much left over. So they might have to wait and go on a later flight or flight tomorrow. To avoid delaying the dog's journey, she wants to get them on their scheduled flight. The flight departs in two and a half hours. So. The clock is ticking. Many of the planes landing at Heathrow aren't on the ground very long before they take off again. So staff at the reception centre need to work fast to meet their tight deadlines. Animal Health Officer Lisa is airside to collect three birds off a flight from South Africa. So I've just got to wait for this lot to come off and then hopefully my, my lot will be at the back behind them. The time is an essence at Heathrow. You know, if it's delayed, it's going to come to the airline. 
a lot of money because they made themselves delayed. So everyone needs to get in, get them off, get it turned around so they can go back out again. But for me, it's about the animals. I don't care about the luggage. You know, as long as I get the animals off and they're healthy and they're, they're happy, that's fine. Well, I don't want them outside too much because it's quite cold today. When the birds emerge, Lisa can't resist taking a quick peek. All safely on board, Lisa heads back to base. Each year, around 800 birds pass through the reception centre. And as soon as they enter the building, the staff must take extra precautions. Because um, I've picked up some birds, and this is now an enclosed environment, I need to wear the um, a mask for the birds. And it's to protect me, not the birds. Birds can carry a variety of airborne diseases, including avian influenza. Hi, birdies. We have one birdie. Hello. It's a ringneck. You see a lot of these in the UK, flying around wild. Native to Africa and India, ring-necked parakeets became established in the UK in the 1970s. It's unclear whether they were released from captivity or escaped, but after breeding, there are now more than 8,000 pairs in southeast England. We have one cockatiel and two cockatiels. All one family. Cockatiels are small, affectionate parrots, one of the most popular birds to keep as pets. Waiting in reception is owner Ken, who's looking forward to having the birds back after nearly 10 years apart. The in-laws have been looking after them and uh, taking care of them for us, and now we've decided to bring them over to, to be with us instead. It's, it's nice to finally pick them up and be part of the family again. The ringneck is uh, Mia. Uh, the, the two cockatiels is Pearl and Latino, who is effectively bald completely on top. There were some concerns that he potentially had uh, issues which could have stopped him coming over, but he was fully cleared in the end. But Latino and his buddies still have to pass the ARC's checks before they can be reunited with Ken. Not all animals arriving at the reception centre have family waiting to pick them up. Some come to the UK. So this one you need to be extra careful with. OK. On their way to new homes. <gasps> oh, my God! <laughs> Four of the latest feline rescues have flown in from the United Arab Emirates and are already a hit with animal health officers Amber and Becky. Oh, you just want to be loved. Are they Scottish Folds? Yes. Scottish Folds are named after their small, floppy ears. She's like rubbing her face so hard against the pen. <laughs> They're all descended from a feral cat named Susie, who was discovered on a farm in Scotland in the 1960s. There's been a worldwide surge in their popularity after celebrity owners like Taylor Swift and Ed Sheeran posted photos of their pets on social media. This one's cute as well. I think this one will need one. Yeah, this one's really size. cute. Waiting to collect Smokey, Ashes, Misty and Oscar is Georgia. And she's not used to dealing with cats. We're a rescue centre that's based in Fajira, which is in the UAE, and we actually rescue dogs and rehome them in the UK and all over the world. But in this case, um, a lady came to us with some cats and said, please, please, can you help us? Because my kittens had an accident, you know, I haven't got a spade yet, so she's had kittens. And we said, yeah, that's fine, you know, they were lovely, lovely cats. They're absolutely beautiful. So we took them on. Scottish Folds have come under fire from vet groups because the breed suffers from serious health problems. 
but these four kittens still need caring homes, and Georgia has had no trouble finding them new owners. They are so friendly, they're so cuddly, they, they're like dogs. I mean, I'm, I haven't had cats, but when I saw these cats back when they were younger, I just couldn't believe how friendly and confident that they were. And my friend has also got some in the UK. And when I go to her house, they just want to sit on you all the time. And they're constantly purring. Amber just needs to verify their medical records before they can be released into the country. In the bird wing, animal health officer Lisa is offering refreshments to three pet parrots from South Africa while their paperwork is checked. Any birds that are coming in for transit or import, our protocol is to make sure they are fit. We check to make sure that they've got food and water. Hello. Hey, sweetie. To keep them as calm as possible, Lisa wants to top up their supplies without removing them from their boxes. We'll put some water in there. All right, my love. It's a bit scary, but it's not that scary because it actually will help you. That's it. So I've just got some seed for them. These two birds only got water pots, they've got no food pots, so I'm just going to sprinkle it on the floor. I'm going to put it from the side, this side. I don't want to freak her out too much, and I don't fancy opening the back door, so here goes. As long as they're hydrated, then I'm not too worried about food as they're going home to their families. In reception, owner Ken is relieved that the birds have finally arrived safe and well. It'd be nice to see them again, a bit of a, a process, difficulty dealing with um, yeah, importing the birds from South Africa, a lot of tape, uh, red tape to go through and bureaucracy. Captive cockatiels and parakeets can live over 25 years, so Ken is in for the long haul. It's going to be good to get to know them again now and uh, get frustrated too with some of the noise, but. Um, when you take them, you, you need to accept that they're with you for life, so you need to look after them. They all seem quite fine. This one's got a little bit of a ball patch on the back of the head, but if they live together, this one might have done that for him. I actually have uh, my own parrot. I have an African grey called a Dylan, which I've had for 25 years. I've hand-reared him since he was obviously a little baby. He's lovely. He just literally snuggles into my neck and that's it. He's my baby. I don't know how long he's going to live for. Probably outlive me, I'm sure. I'll leave them now to chill out. I've got the vents on, so they've got ventilation, good temperature in here, and I'll leave them to calm down because birds get quite stressed quite easily. With the birds settled, Vet Andrew can check their microchips. Oh, I just need to read the microchip on those, the old three microchips, without causing too much stress. Here we go. That's one of them. The numbers on the chips match their paperwork and show they're not carrying diseases. All we need to do is just process the documents and I will be ready to go. So at last, they can be reunited with Ken. The birds will, will finally be home, no, no longer to have to worry about them being away from home. And one of the cockatiels will need extra special care. It looks like Pearl's just laid an egg on, uh, on her travels. Um, obviously unfertilized, so it's, it's what she's done in the past. It's something that you have to pay attention to with birds laying eggs and if you don't look after them and give them the right minerals they, they can die from it so it's important to to be very careful when you see these things so one of the things we'll be doing now when we go home is making sure she gets onto the right foods and right minerals to to keep her healthy. Pearl, Mia and Latino are in good hands and finally on the last leg of their epic 5,000 mile journey. Aircraft at Heathrow run to a strict schedule. 
and Supervisor Cayley is working against the clock to get two Border Collies to their onward flight. One in the kennel, one in the box. I said they've got 15 minutes to get the box all right so I can re-x-ray and get it in the bag. Okay. New travel containers have been ordered to keep the fighting puppies apart, but they still haven't shown up and time is running out. We've got 10 minutes for the box to turn up before we have to leave for the flight. Farewell, farewell is our main concern. We can't put them in the same box, so we're just waiting for this agent to bring a new box. Hopefully any minute now. Finally, they arrive. Yes, so the two, there's a guy there in the van, yeah. he's making up the boxes, the two small boxes, so you can help him carry them in. Okay. Kaylee needs to get the first pup out of his original box and into a smaller one to fit on the plane. Hello. But he doesn't seem to appreciate the urgency. to go. I'm late. I know. You've got water everywhere. That's actually right. Stand up. That's actually fine. Come on, puppy. You are wriggly. You get a trolley. There's still one last job to do before the pair can leave. All travel boxes have to be x-rayed to make sure they don't contain anything they shouldn't. Yes, I know. We've had to eat each other. With the dogs good to go at last, it's Animal Health Officer Lisa's task to get them out to their plane. The light leaves at 12 and it's 12, yeah. Dogs. It's going to be a race to the runway. It's all a bit crazy. In the cat wing, four Scottish fold kittens are waiting to clear customs. Georgia, who works for a pet rescue charity, is here to collect them. I can't wait to see them, but I know that when I see them, I'm not going to want to give them away. <laughs> this is the problem with free homing. Every, every animal that comes in, you sort of think, oh, I wouldn't mind this one, you know. So I can't get attached to any of them. <laughs> I don't think my chihuahuas would be happy, to be honest. So. They're not a fan of cats. <laughs> While she waits, kitten Smokey is making an impression on animal health officer Amber. Oh, bit of a nibbler. They're very sweet. Little kitties, aren't you? Going to new owners, aren't you? Oh, <laughs> this is what I mean about cats. <laughs> One minute they love you and they're like, actually, I've had enough. The cat's microchips have been read, and the paperwork is all in order so they can be released to Georgia. Hello. So this is Smokey. So beautiful, aren't you? How am I going to give you away? And then in here... Did you have a safe night? She's beautiful. A few weeks later, and Smokey settled nicely into her new home with cat lover Sharon. I wasn't particularly on the lookout for a cat, another cat, because um, I've already got four, but then why stop at four? <laughs> Felt like she's always been around. She's definitely part of the family, and she's got her own personality, and, and she's just settled in really, really well. She's definitely a confident little cat. Um, she struts around the house. She'll run around with the, with the other cats. She lets you know when, when she wants something, so she's pretty confident. I'm really pleased that we've, we've had the opportunity to take Smokey and uh, give her a nice home.
Back at Heathrow, Animal Health Officer Lisa is airside, rushing to get two border collies to their flight to Canada on time. I'm hoping we are going to get them there, fingers crossed. If the puppies miss their plane, they might have to wait until tomorrow for the next one. This tunnel is very dark and dirty, and it is just reminds me of one of those zombie movies. <laughs> and it is really horrible in this tunnel. Above us is the runway, one of the runways anyway. And they could never shut it off, because really this is like the main tunnel. It leads us now onto the airport. You'd have to drive all the way to the other side of the airport just to go all the way down there to come all the way back here. And uh, it's far. And there's light. There's no more zombies. Look, it's just the airport. <laughs> Almost there. We can't be delayed, can't be late. But Lisa needs to keep her wits about her as she navigates her way around aircraft worth millions of pounds. I don't like to go anywhere near this wing. Am I okay for that? I can't go around it. <laughs> See? I'm so scared. <gasps> it is so scary going anywhere near any of the wings, the tail. If you hit something, my, my job is gone. Word doesn't seem to have reached the ground crew about there being two boxes rather than one. The head loader didn't know that there were two boxes, but he might not know because it's happened so quickly. But fortunately, there's enough space for both of them. Thank God for that. Hi, guys. Last bit of your journey. Be careful this handle, it's a bit... Thank you. Hey, baby, it's OK. As the dogs are checked in, Lisa can finally relax. Yeah, all that running around, a hard effort. Now they're getting on the flight, so uh, everyone's happy. Yeah. Parrots Mia, Pearl and Latino made it safely to Andover with owner Ken. All the Scottish fold kittens have been rehomed and Smokey is still enjoying life in Surrey with Sharon. She's just adorable. I love her lots. And hopefully I'm going to give her a nice, long, happy life. And the Border Collie's flight to Canada took off on time.